a happy marriage works around or what it works with. Number one, first issue is the issue of trust. If you do not trust your spouse, you're wasting your time. Trust comes now. It is built and sown right now. The seeds of trust are sown right now. So you trust one another, come what may. When you hear an anonymous caller calling you, that is a lie. No matter how true it sounds, it's a lie. Throw it out, you will be happy. The minute you are to entertain someone else and their stories, you are not going to be happy. And the day you break up, they will be laughing. And they will be excited. May the Almighty protect us from mischief makers. And may He make us from those who can help our spouses trust us. There's no point in saying, trust me, trust me. But everything you're doing is testing my trust for you. May the Almighty grant us goodness. Okay. And this leads us to something else. We need time with one another. Spend maximum time with one another. The Prophet ﷺ says, You want to succeed in life? Spend maximum time at home. Your wife, your children. SubhanAllah. Your children. And perhaps your parents and so on. When you are at home, especially after the evening prayer, he says, if you do not have something constructive to do, make sure you are at home. Because mashallah, you're sitting with one another, you're talking to each other, you have time to bond with your family and so on. Nobody doubts you because 90% of sin is committed after the sun sets. Have you thought of that? That is what the Prophet, peace be upon him, says. You go home when the sun sets, meaning after the night prayer, go home. Unless you have something constructive and beneficial to do. So if you want to solve your marital crises, you need trust, you need to spend maximum time, quality time. This means your friends, sorry for looking at you, but your friends become secondary. Your wife becomes primary first. Which means, if your friends feel bad, that oh, this guy is now, you know what, he is controlled by his wife, they can keep on uttering those statements for as long as you are happy. It doesn't mean anything. Mashallah. See, all your friends are beginning to hurt you. Allah said, God us. This is a fact. You want your marriage to work, your spouse comes number one. Your immediate family, number one. They're after your friends. So if you have 911 from them and from them, you know where to go first, inshallah. May Allah save God us and grant us goodness and may He open our doors. It's something very important. People don't know how to prioritize. You want to go on holiday? Take her with you. You want to get somewhere? Take her with you. And another thing, transparency. But they all start with T. We said trust. We said time. Now we're talking of transparency. Be transparent as possible. Don't have hidden agendas in the closet. You know, the phone has got three locks. Why? First one, in case she gets through. The second one, in case she gets through. The third one, she'll never get through. What's the reason? If you have transparency, nothing will go wrong. That having been said, do not go into your spouse's phone for nothing. Don't. No matter what. Don't. This is the policy we've taught people as counselors today. We are in an age of advanced technology where people send MWAH so many times to people they hate just to say hello. Have you seen that? People say love you when they actually hate you. Allahu Akbar. So if you see something on the phone of your spouse saying love you or a little heart, you should know that that is not actually genuine. Today we are in an age of people being fake. When people have proven it to you by living to you, that's good enough. Although we are taught to utter. That brings me to another point. Reassurance of the spouse or to the spouse of your love verbally and in other ways is very, very important. Keep on uttering it to them. Keep on every day in different ways. Look at them, smile at them and you utter these words of how much you love them. You make a difference. No point in saying, can't you feel it? Come on. Come on. What don't I do for you? That's not good enough. As much as you do for them, you still need to utter the words of love for them. And every day, just like you are engaging in an act of worship, you know, you need to tell them how much you love them in various ways. You know, you need to keep on looking at them, staring at them, how beautiful they are. Because you don't want them to feel that coming from someone else than yourself. The minute that happens, we are in a danger zone. We ask the Almighty to grant us goodness. And we always tell people, you know, you're supposed to dress for your husband so that he can appreciate you. The difficulty is husbands do not appreciate their spouses. So pass a good comment. Oh, you're looking awesome. You're looking gorgeous. Wow. You know, and you can even pretend to be blushing if you want. Allah protect us. <laughs> the beauty of it is when someone else utters those words, they will be very cheap. They will not be turning towards them. But if you've never uttered sweet words, romantic words to your spouse, the minute a person in the mall begins to turn around so badly, they will get that attention. The devil comes and makes one feel that, you know what, I don't even get this look from my own spouse. So now when they're going to the mall, they all talked up. 
But when they're at home, you know, the smelling of the cooking and the onions and so on, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and grant us ease and goodness. I am a person, I'm sure you all know me, we press the red button. We like to speak reality, not fairy tale. It must be applicable in my life and yours, and believe me, it works. Believe me, it works. Thereafter, we have the Almighty who has taught us not only trust, not only uh, time, and not only transparency, but together with that tolerance. You need to tolerate some differences that you may have. You've been brought up totally different. Different parents, different sometimes countries, cities, likes, dislikes, whatever is within the limits of the law, you need to try your best to adopt and adjust to it. Whatever is out of line, you need to make it clear. Look, this thing here, I'm not happy with it because the Almighty will be displeased if we do it this way. There you are. You've made your lines very clear. But for example, you know, you're thinking of buying a car and so on. So now you've settled on a BMW 5 Series and thereafter there is an argument, should it be blue or should it be white? Whatever the color is, believe me, it's minor. If white color is going to solve a marital problem, let it be white. Alhamdulillah. It's a minor issue. But you've got the car, you see? So you make the bigger decisions. Have you noticed? Mashallah. And you are mighty around us goodness and ease. So you need to prioritize and know. If you disagree with everything that is said and you just want to be a pain, then the major decisions, you will never ever get them right. Remember, in your marital life, in, in the year, you probably have three or four major decisions to be made. The others are all minor. So when it comes to the minor ones, you can compromise a little bit more either way. To the degree that if either is compromising, then you find goodness in what is coming. May the Almighty grant us every form of ease and goodness. I've spoken quite a bit, inshallah, regarding what may make your marriage work by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, never be vulgar. Your tongue, that's another T, look at it. Your tongue, use it properly. Don't be vulgar, do not lie. Do not say utterances that will displease the maker. No. And we ask the Almighty to protect us because the tongue is something that is repeated in the verses we shall be reading in a few moments. Every time the Almighty says, be conscious of your maker. And then he says, utter only that which is upright. Because 90% of marital problems are connected to the tongue. How you use your tongue. If you don't know how to use your tongue, you know, you will suffer a lot of turbulence. May the Almighty protect us from that type of behavior and the abuse of the tongue. So one might ask, what are the benefits of Tawbah? Do you know that the benefits of Tawbah, one of them is that you will be granted sustenance. The wealth that we want so much. If we engage in istighfar and we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will give it to us or He will give us barakah in the wealth. Listen to what Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam told his people in another place in the Quran. فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ This is in Surah Nuh. إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا وَيُمْدِدْكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ أَنْهَارًا Nuh alayhi salatu was salam told his people engage in istighfar, engage in tawbah and you will find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most forgiving. He will send the rain as a result of your repentance. So when we want rain, we need to ask Allah's forgiveness. Then the rain will come. And over and above that, He will grant you lots of wealth and He will grant you offspring who will be the coolness of your eyes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us. And then He says on top of that, He will grant us Jannah in the Akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us. Whenever our eyes and our gaze is not controlled, and we happen to look at the opposite sex more than what we are allowed, in that case, it will result in destruction of one way or another. Let me give you an example. Sometimes you're driving your motor vehicle and someone happens to pass quite good looking and you turn, you might bump the car in front of you. It can happen. Why? It's similar to cutting the hand. It will cause bodily harm, material harm. It will cause lots of harm. It's a fact. Sometimes if you engage in an act, you might end up with a huge disease. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. So this is a lesson to say anyone who wants to follow that path, there is destruction coming your way. Do you know that we are taught by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that when you have wealth, a salary at the end of the month or wealth, and there is no barakah in it, no barakah at all. Ask yourself, you probably engaged in a sin. You're probably oiling some of your bad habits. Maybe casino, maybe gambling, maybe drinking, maybe nightclubs, maybe drugs. 
maybe a woman, maybe someone of the opposite sex. You need to pay money. You need to look after someone more than what Allah has shouldered upon you. How can there be barakah in your wealth? So if you find your money is running away quickly, leave the sins and you will find that 500 rands will last the whole month. You'll still have 450 inshallah. May Allah grant us barakah in Imagine, our wealth. The hadith says, رَجُلٌ دَعَتْهُ إِمْرَأَةٌ ذَاتُ مَنْصَبٍ وَجَمَالٍ فَقَالَ إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهِ Allah will grant the shade of his arsh on the day of Qiyamah to a man whom, when a lady who is very good looking and wealthy and well to do, who has a high status in society, calls him towards sin and she says, look, he says, look, I fear Allah. Allah says on the day of Qiyamah, I will call him out by name. Everyone will be wondering, what is this man called out for? By name, Allahu Akbar. Allah says, come, come, this day of heat. You will be under the air conditioning system, Allahu Akbar, under the shade of my own arsh.